Hi, I'm HB, and I'm here to show you the proper method for bleeding juicy brakes. The first thing you want to do is take some safety precautions. You'll see that I have my special nitrile gloves, safety glasses, and it's always good to have a couple clean rags around. Now that my safety gear is in place, the next step will be to prepare the syringes. You'll need two Avid syringes. The first one I will fill about two-thirds full with Avid brake fluid. We recommend DOT 5.1. You can also use DOT 4 brake fluid. The next thing I'm going to do is actually degas the fluid. How I do this is first thing I'm going to release the clamp and then I'm going to push all the air out past the clamp like so. Close the clamp. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull on the syringe and I'm going to draw out any bubbles or air that's in the fluid. As you'll see, as I'm drawing this, little bubbles are coming out. I sometimes give it a little flick with my finger. Again, see how all the bubbles are being drawn out of the fluid because it's under vacuum. And then I'm going to go ahead and push the rest of those bubbles out. It's important to note that you're never going to get every single bubble out of the fluid, but do this two or three times and it'll be super pure. Make sure that you have your lever in somewhat of a normal position. It needs to be sort of downhill facing, somewhere towards a 45 degree angle. You don't want the thing pointing up in the air. The second thing we need to do is adjust the pad contact all the way out. You'll see that there's a, a little in mark and an arrow. We want to go opposite that direction. So on this side, we're going to turn it right until it stops and our pad contact is all the way out. The final procedure in the lever setup is to make sure that the reach adjust is out two to three millimeters or about two to three threads. As you can see right in there, I have plenty of reach adjust moving out, so I'm in the proper position. The next procedure we're going to do is we're going to actually install the syringes. I'm going to go ahead and take off the front wheel here. It'll make it a little easier. But what's important is that you have a pad spacer tool like this. So we'll take this pad spacer tool slide in between the pads, make sure it clicks in place. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the syringe that's two-thirds full onto the caliper. What we need is our T10 Torx, and we're going to loosen the bleed screw here and rather quickly try to install the syringe into the caliper like this. The next step is we're going to attach the empty syringe into the lever reservoir after we remove the bleed screw. The last thing to prepare for bleeding is we're going to actually pull the lever all the way to the handlebar and attach it to the bar using a toe strap or a rubber band or some apparatus. Now we're ready to bleed the caliper. What I want to do is hold the syringe up, loosen the clamp, and I want to gently pull on the syringe itself. A few times, gently, you'll see some bubbles coming up there. Give them a chance to crawl out of the system. Okay, great. More bubbles. Now I'm going to lightly push on the syringe as well. So I'm going to push lightly, not too hard. We want to repeat this process two or three times until no more air bubbles come into the syringe. Now we are going to push fluid through the line and bleed the line into the lever. To do this, the first thing we're going to do is detach our cool toe clip strap. Now we're going to gently push on the syringe on the caliper, and it's going to be pushing fluid through the hose. You can see some bubbles came out there. We're going to keep pushing, keep pushing. A couple more little bubbles coming out. This is getting all the air out of the line. Now it's important when we get close to the end of the syringe, here on the caliper, that we stop. 
We don't want any of the air that's in that syringe to get, go back into the hose. So when we get close like that, we're going to stop and we're going to clamp off the caliper syringe. Now that we've bled all the air out of the line, we're going to go ahead and remove the syringe down at the caliper. Again, it's sort of important that you do this in a timely manner. And I'm also going to keep a rag down here so in case any fluid happens to spill out, it won't migrate towards the pads. So what I'm going to do, unscrew, screw in, and wipe clean. All right, so the final step in the bleed process is to actually bleed the lever. Similar to the bottom, we're going to make sure this is unclamped, and we're going to lightly pull two or three times. See some little bubbles coming out of there, getting all the bubbles out of the lever. Now we're going to lightly push a few times. Repeat that a few times. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're actually going to pull the lever in a few times. And what this is doing is it's getting air that's in there around the piston is going to go away. Now we're going to do this again. A couple times here. Push a couple times. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to push down a little bit more firm one last time. Release the pressure. Close the clamp. Okay, so we've properly bled the lever. Now what we're going to do is unscrew the syringe. I've got my Torx and my bleed screw ready. Quickly install the bleed screw. Have your rag ready to catch any little bit of fluid that might go off of there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to clean the lever and clean the caliper area with some water or some alcohol. All right, so our final step is take your wheel. We've moved your pad spacer. Stick our wheel back on. We all know how to do that. And check the feel of the brake. Super solid. Very nice. Now remember, you already changed the pad contact adjustment. So what I'm going to do is actually turn that in back where it was. Now you've got a happy, safe customer breaking his way down the trail.